In this video, you'll learn how to do exposure blending with luminosity masks when working with 32-bit HDR images. As you can see in my original unedited RAW here, things are pretty flat. The sky is kind of lacking some of that punch and color you would expect, and the overall contrast ratio is pretty low. I mean, the back side of the tower bridge should be very dark compared to where the light is coming from in the sky over here because it's just the back side of the sky that's casting light here. So this is a very flat result. And it's not terribly surprising because the default is in the standard dynamic range. And we want to take advantage of the new HDR or high dynamic range mode in Lightroom so we can get to a better result. Now I've done many edits in Lightroom using HDR. So rather than showing you this full edit on the raw, I'll link below to some other videos where I do that work. And instead we'll focus here on the Photoshop work that we'll do in a moment. So I took this raw and I duplicated it twice, once for the sky, so I've got a much better looking sky here. We've got all the color, it's punchy, the lights on the bridge look great. And this is all possible by enabling the HDR mode in Lightroom and just making a few tweaks like boosting the contrast and the highlights. I also did something a little bit unusual here and that is this HDR limit normally defaults to four stops. You'd be able to use the full HDR range in the histogram, but I'm not allowing the fourth stop here. And the reason for that is there's so many bright HDR pixels that I think it could be a bit overwhelming. So I wanted to tone it down and just have parts of the sky be at three stops, other parts are like two and one, kind of darken things down a little bit. So I just limited that to keep the overall image in balance. So while it looks great in the highlights, of course, the shadows are just completely trashed here. There's no version that I can get out of one set of raw edits here where I'm gonna have the sky I want and the shadow detail I want. So rather than trying to force compromise, I processed once for the sky and then made another copy of the same raw file and I processed it for the shadow detail. So obviously this all looks very nice here in the shadows, but now the sky is too bright. It's kind of blown out. It looks a little bit kind of pastel and funny. So we've got a nice looking foreground, nice looking sky. We just need to stitch these together. And to do that, we'll go over to Photoshop and use luminosity masks to exposure blend. Now for reference, I'm going to grab the original raw as well as so we can compare that. So let's just go click and then shift click so we can select all three versions. I'm going to right click, go choose edit in and go down to open as smart object layers in Photoshop. So this is going to send all three over to Photoshop in one stacked document. And here you can see you've got my layers. Obviously this on top is my original. So let's just need to label that. Underneath it is the sky versions. Go mark that as the sky. And then of course, this is just going to be our shadow details here. So we'll call that the details. So we're ready to go with this. What we want to do now is just sort these in order for the exposure blending. And I want to sort it with the lightest layer, the shadow detail on top. And then we're just going to blend that in. Normally I work the other way around, but most of the image is correct with the sky. And I just want to bring in a little bit of these darker details. So to get that done, we're going to work with my Lumenzia Luminosity Masking plugin for Photoshop. And what we're going to do is just jump right down to pre-blend. When you click on this, it'll help sort the layers to get them ready to blend. And so I'm going to sort with light on top so that we can blend in just the shadow detail. We'll add black masks and lock layers doesn't actually really matter because these are smart objects. You can't edit them anyway, but I just leave this on so I don't accidentally paint on the image versus paint on a layer mask. So we'll click blend layers. It'll give us that result real quick. And so you can see on top are the shadow details. Then with the sky, it doesn't need a layer mask, but it kind of came through because I added in this original at the bottom. So it's kind of not really normal. I'm going to right click and just mark this in red and let's hide it because this is just for a reference. I wouldn't normally have this as part of the image, but just for the sake of teaching here on YouTube. So we've got our sky and now we're going to bring in the shadow details. So what we need is a way to select the areas which are dark in the image, a darks luminosity selection. And for that, we're going to go to Lumenzia and just click on D. You get D is going to be the darks. So click for our preview. And the result right now, you can see it's obviously selecting things which are very dark and not things are bright like the sky, but there's not enough separation. So we want a more discriminate version of the darks. And so we can use the slider, maybe try darks three and it's a little more separation, but I want more separation from the sky and the bridge. Let's try darks four. I think that's looking pretty good. The rest of the sky here, I don't want to paint on it. And rather than just going further down the darks here, 
what I'll do is create a secondary selection to knock this out. So we can select this guy here, just grabbing the quick select tool. What I'll do is click and drag across to pick the sky, maybe hold shift, get this little middle piece here. So now we've selected these sky areas and I'm not too worried about some of these little details here. If that's a problem later, I can fix that. But I just don't wanna have large errors here. Now, what I'm gonna do is remove this from the preview and I need to invert this because whatever is inside the marching ants, that will be part of the selection. So I wanna select the foreground, not the sky. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift I to invert. Now the marching ants are around the bottom here. So this is gonna tell Lumenzia go grab all the things which are white inside these marching ants. So to ignore the sky here and ignore this guy here and ignore this cloud over here. And we can just focus on the dark areas. So we'll go ahead and click cell to load that as a selection. It's asking how to combine the selection. And I'm just gonna say, don't expand, but feather by one, just in case there's any little errors at the edges here, it kind of softens that up a bit. We'll say, okay. And now we have our dark selection. However, as I've shown in other videos, which I'll link below, whenever you're gonna brighten through a dark selection, you wanna use a subtracted selection. So I'll link below if you wanna learn more about that. I've got a whole like 15 minute video on what it is and why you do it. What we're gonna do here is just create it by double clicking the minus button in Lamentia. That's literally all you need to do. It has now subtracted something which is a couple levels darker. So we had a darks four preview. It just subtracted out darks six. And our selection is now ready to go. Just so you understand what's going on here, the selection buttons lit green, letting us know that there is an active selection, but the marching ants are just hidden. If I click on the red check cell button in Lumenzia, we can see this selection. So as I mentioned, it knocked out all the sky areas. And if you remember before, the bridge itself was just kind of white everywhere. By subtracting out the selection, we're protecting the darker areas. So we're gonna brighten the local highlights on the face of this building versus trying to dark brighten up the, the blacks where things would get very low contrast. That's why we want a subtracted selection. So our selection is looking really good. And I'm just gonna go click on check cell again to load it. Actually, it's a little bit dim. Let's go to the levels. We can actually, when you're using check cell, you can edit your selection here with the levels. I'm gonna just bring this in about halfway just so we're not painting as slowly. This will just speed up the brushing work. I am not working with a Wacom tablet that I normally would. I just have my mouse. And so unfortunately my brushing technique is gonna be slow and, and not that accurate. And this will just kind of help me a little bit with that for this video. So let's go load that as my selection. And now just make the layer active, click on the mask. So we've got our mask targeted. And what we're gonna do is hit B for the brush. We have our brush active with white paint, high opacity and low flow. So we're gonna paint with white onto a black layer mask. And wherever we paint white on this mask, we'll see this brighter version of the image. And because we have a selection, which only lets us paint in the shadow areas here, it's gonna help guide the brushing so that we're painting and brightening up the building by revealing this layer. So I'm just gonna go and make a few quick passes here. And I think what I'm gonna do is probably speed up this part of the video significantly because again, I'm working with a mouse and not working with a, a tablet. So I'm not gonna be very accurate. I'm gonna be really slow. And I think if you just have to watch me do the entire brush work with a mouse, it's gonna make for a pretty tedious video. So I'll try and accelerate that portion of the video here. And because the selection is kind of weak, there's several areas where I need to brush multiple times to really bring out the results. So the uh, sounds you hear of the mouse are gonna be a little bit out of sync with the speed of the video, because I'll just speed it up. Okay, I've just done a bunch of brushing that I accelerated there, and we can see from before to after how we're bringing out that extra shadow detail. And that's looking pretty good overall. Uh, if I shift click the mask and kind of see how much further I could take it. and I think I'm gonna do a little bit more brushing to keep refining things. So I'm gonna keep speeding things up and come back in a moment here. Okay, so at this point, I think I've got a result that I'm pretty happy with. It's not my best work. It's just really hard to work with a mouse instead of a Wacom tablet, but I think it shows the result here pretty nicely. And all I did with all that high-speed work was just keep brushing with white paint through my selection. If I option click the mask, you can see this is the result here. And there's a few areas I missed. I could do better in these towers, this little area here. It's not a bad idea to kind of quality check this kind of stuff. So maybe just kind of quickly get a little bit of some of these areas I missed. 
I don't think it really affects the image that much. But I think overall the blend is, is looking pretty good here. So I'm happy with this result. And let's just take a look, if we go back to the original, if I option click, you can see here was the original raw, very low contrast, very flat. The sky doesn't look very interesting at all. And then when I option click, you can see the blended result here. And we got there by processing for the sky and then bringing out the shadow details to get to a much better looking result here. So I think this looks good. I wanna go ahead and export this for Instagram. I'm gonna go over to WebSharp Pro. And in here, I'm choosing the Instagram post. In my settings, we wanna go and choose P3 and JPEG with Game Map. That's really all you need to get a good export for Instagram. And we'll go ahead and click on export. And it's popping up asking what we wanna do for the SDR version, because I did not specify it. So now we're gonna create it. So our HDR was looking like this, and we need to create something for people who don't have the benefit of HDR on their display. What are they going to see? And that's what this is all about. So we need to process this. And I think if we bring the highlights down a little bit further, maybe boost the shadows a little bit and just bring the overall exposure down a little bit. Somewhere in here, let's just compare again before to after. Obviously the HDR looks much better, but we're just trying to create the best we can within the limits of the SDR range. And I think I'm happy with that result. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And now it's just packaging up both the SDR I just created with my original HDR and outputting a game map for me to upload to Instagram. So here is my HDR. I chose the option in WebSharp Pro to add labels. So just for reference in the settings here, this little add labels, that's what I do just for teaching sake. So it output a version that's an HDR and then the SDR for comparison. I'm just gonna select both. Let's go switch over to my browser and I'm in Instagram. I'll go and click to create a new post. And then I need to drag the images here. So just grab both, drag them over. And then you always need to choose original ratio. If you don't do this, then Instagram will not keep the HDR. And then I need to change the sort order so that my HDR is first. So just drag it here and that didn't work. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So our HDR is first and just go hit next. Ignore the fact it's not showing the preview here and just share it and give it a second to upload. And we're pretty much done here. Let's go and as soon as this is done, I'm gonna reload this page. And here you can see is the HDR post. And then for reference is the SDR. So if you're looking at this and you don't have HDR, you may not see the word HDR kind of dim down on most displays if you don't have HDR support. But if you go to Instagram, you'll be able to see this on your phone in my Instagram account, which is just Greg Benz Photography on Instagram. Now to learn more about exposure blending with Lumenzia, click to this next video.